So um, this video is called From GTK to QT and it's about porting a GTK app to a QT app and effectively I want to document effectively the reasons why I've done this um, and the problems I had doing this um, for other people and maybe they'll find it useful. So I'm upstream maintainer of um, this little application here which is called GPVDM or General Purpose Photovoltaic Device Model and it's effectively a a device for simulating solar cells and um, LEDs sort of from the device physics perspective and it's used by researchers and scientists to understand how these devices work and um, from the computing side it's effectively a Python um, GTK so Python 2.7 GTK um, front end um, and it effectively controls a rather large C program by editing ASCII input files um, executing the the C program using some system command or something and um, then reading back the inputs and, and plotting graphs. So it's effectively just a, a straightforward UI with nothing particularly clever um, behind it. So this was all written in, as I say, in Python 2.7 and GTK, whatever the latest GTK was that's not 3. So I think GTK 2.6 or 2.7. Um, and it was all fine. And the other major feature of this um, of this model is that I write it all on Linux so you know, it all compiles on Linux and it runs on Linux but most unit users are Windows users um, just because that's how it's worked out um, for various reasons so the application must be cross-platform because otherwise I'll, use lo I'll lose loads of users so it's got to look just like this both on Linux and Windows and execute without any problems at all and I don't want to be giving loads of help to people so uh, yeah, it's got to work flawlessly. Um, it was all working fine and I was quite liking the GTK widget set um, until I decided to move the model from it being a, a 1D model to a 3D model and I wanted to simulate the device or the solar cell in 3D and to help me do this I wanted a nice visual picture in the model of a 3D solar cell and I wanted this ideally drawn in OpenGL. So I thought, right, what I'll do is I'll swap out this, this widget here, which is, this is a Cairo drawing surface with a sort of a 2D drawing on it. And I'll swap this out with an OpenGL um, widget and I'll draw to this window and it won't be a problem. Now this worked on Linux quite well. So I found a, a OpenGL widget to fit here and I made it work and I had a nice 3D picture of my, um, of my, uh, of my device. Now, the first problem I found was that OpenGL and Linux did uh, OpenGL and GTK didn't play very nice, um, and somebody's written this bit really long sort of wrapper thing that joins up G, GT. Um, so this is what it's called, uh, making GTK and GL play nice, and somebody's put a lot of effort in making GTK and OpenGL play nice um, on Python with with Python. Um, so I thought, right, fine, I copied and pasted this and it worked and I got my nice 3D representation of my device there and it's all good. Um, the problem came when then trying to port it to Windows because uh, this widget hadn't been compiled or, or kept up to date for Windows. And there, I read about ways to compile this OpenGL widget thing on um, Windows and it required editing the source code of this widget and recompiling. I do not have a, a compiler for Windows. I, I do everything on, on Linux. So I use min, MinWin or something uh, to, and, and target Windows. So I don't have a copy of, of Visual Studio and I don't really want to learn Visual Studio. I don't really want to be recompiling widgets. So um, that wasn't an option. So I thought well, then I, why don't I move to GTK3 because there seems to be a nicer OpenGL widget in GTK3 that doesn't need this horrific back end. So I looked at that and then I thought, well, I can't, I can't find a demo uh, script in Python to do OpenGL drawing with the GTK3 widget. So I thought, well, it doesn't seem very supportive. The documentation didn't seem very good. And then I started reading a bit more about GTK. And I listened to this uh, guy's talk about converting a dive computer app from GTK to QT and his experiences. And he's, uh, you know, he savages GTK quite a lot in this talk. Um, so what, what I found specifically is the cross-platform compatibility of GTK didn't seem to really be 
up to it, especially with the newer versions. And I also read this thing about uh, switching Wireshark from GTK to Qt, and I sort of thought, well, it seems, or at least my impression was, that uh, GTK is, seems, this is only my impression, this might be completely wrong, but it seems to be being developed by Red Hat people for GNOME 3, and they've not really got any interest in making a cross-platform widget library. So, in effect, I thought, well, GTK is not really helpful for me, so I need something else. So I thought, well, let's rewrite this whole thing in Qt. Um, that can't take long, can it? Well, it took quite a while, but um, so what I thought I'd do now is effectively share my experiences of porting this app from GTK to Qt. So here's the Qt version. It's not it's not 100 finished yet. Um, but it's sort of 98% there and it all works, generally speaking. So here's the uh, here's a nice OpenGL widget and I've not quite finished this off yet, but you can see it's all working. You've got the various um, sort of, you know, layers of device, a bit like in this picture here. Um, but it, this time it's sort of drawn in correct proportions and it's going to be much easier to make it a uh, proper 3D picture in my planet to sort of, you know, be able to whiz it round and, you know, and uh, have a nice 3D representation of the device. So that was all very nice, very nice widget written, um, supplied by the QT people. Um, so I'm now just going to go through the all the problems I hit when converting this app to QT. Um, what I really liked about this QT is that they included this, this sort of tab widget included crosses here on the, on the tab so you could close them off. Um, and you can do this with GTK, but you've got to actually put in a horizontal box here and a label, and this is actually a button with some sort of back-end infrastructure to make it close when I click that. So these are quite a pain to do in GTK. And in Qt, it's just a matter of saying, I'd like some close buttons, please. Um, I found this is sort of, I think is a table widget or something, or tab, I can't remember what this is called, but it's, it's some table widget. And I found this much, much more sane, the whole back end, much more sane, required much less code than the GTK version. Um, what I haven't quite figured out yet is how to make these combo boxes look nice, um, like this, because I think the GTK ones look a bit better, they sort of fit into the table better, but I'm sure that'll come. Um, there wasn't an about dialogue with Qt that I could find. So I had to make my own. This is actually my own window that I've had to make, which is a bit of a pain. Um, whereas in GTK there was a nice about box already generated for you. Um, it's not really an issue. Um, what else? I found in GTK there was a, certainly under Linux, not under Windows, there was a nice virtual term eliminator. So there's actually a proper terminal. And you can, and it's a widget. You can just type commands. It'll do stuff. Um, Whereas in Qt, there wasn't really a nice terminal widget. There are various ways to embed Xterm, but that's point. I can't do that for Windows, and so and I don't like maintaining two different widgets or two different parts of the program for different platforms. Um, but what I did find is this sort of I made a big a big label box, which this is just a label box, and nicely it accepts HTML. So if you Get your C program to output HTML. You can do all sorts of things like coloured, uh, coloured text and whatnot, which is quite nice. Um, so if you if you if we run the model, what happens is it? I think I use the widget Q process. So it runs the um, oh, it's uh, at the bottom now. Oh, it's not scrolling. But anyway, it it, it runs the um, it runs the uh, it runs the um, application and it, and it reads the data sort of almost real time back to the display. It's not a terminal, so you can't really type ls and have it do some. In fact, there we go, it's just editing random text. It is literally a text box. Um, but there we go, I sort of got around that limitation of Qt. Um, what else? So I quite like this tab widget in the respect that it has these crosses, but what I didn't like. Um, was the fact you couldn't very easily do these horizontal tabs in this in uh, in, in 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 GTK you could very easily make these horizontal horizontal tabs that all worked out quite nicely. But here I had to sort of tweak the widget box with some um, some configuration to make it do this, which is a bit of a pain. 
Um, what else do I like? Yeah, in um, GTK there was a nice drop down menu like this that you could sort of add to a toolbar. And this didn't really seem to exist in uh, QT. So, you know, that's swings and roundabouts really. Um, what I did like about QT is the very nice, um, this sort of icon view seemed to be very easy to do and make a lot of sense the way it was written. So I really did like that. Um, what else have we got to talk about? So that was all nice. That was all quite nice. Ah, yes, these these widgets here. So I, this is effectively a copy. It's sort of a, a switch, left right switch, and a on off switch. I found these quite cool. They're part of the GTK no GTK three widget set, and they weren't present in GTK two or two point whatever, but. I wanted them in my application. So for this GTK application, I had to actually, where is it? I had to actually write this widget myself. And I then ported that back to QT. So this doesn't exist on QT, but it's not really a problem to make it. One slightly irritating thing about QT is, can you see this progress bar here? It's sort of pulsing left and right. This function doesn't exist in progress bars in QT. So this progress bar widget is actually my own widget that um, with a pulsing function uh, so I had to make that which was a pain but you know okay um, I think that's really it overall I found the QT widget set better to write code for than the GTK widget set um, it seems to be more logical and more sensible and more polished generally and certainly in terms of cross-platform it does seem like they actually want to support other platforms which is fairly key uh, you know because I don't have time to rewrite for different platforms um, is there anything else worth mentioning I'll just fire this up yeah um, this matplotlib thing seem, that I used for plotting graph seems to work quite nicely um, in Qt so I was quite pleased with that um, there's a nice web browser actually that um, so some I can replace this this widget here with a web browser and Qt's got a very nice web browser uh, that seems to work out quite well um, yeah I think that's it so ah oh, some tips in terms of porting applications between between widget sets I was helped immensely with this application because um, because this is written in Python, the back ends in C. I've already really split out the the model and the, the interface. That was that was quite uh, helped me a lot importing it. But then um, I found that what really s could speed things up is if you somehow separated out, commonly used bits of GUI code and put them in your own function. So, for example, often the code to bring up message boxes is quite convoluted, and if you put this in a little function called message box and just some text. Um, this helps speed up porting. So if I wanted to port this to a new widget set in the future, I wouldn't have to replace hundreds of sort of message box uh, bits of code. Um, I just replace one. And the same with this table. So to get data out of this cell, I've got my own function to pull data out of this cell, which hopefully will speed up conversion of this um, program if I need to use a different widget set in the future. Um, yeah, I think that's it really. Um, so, yeah, recommend QT. Um, probably better than GTK in terms of cross platformness. I think there's a WX widget set that I'm not sure about, that I've not used um, or got any experience of, so I can't really comment on if that's better or not. So, yeah, thanks for uh, listening. I hope this has been of some use.